In this video, we're going to discuss atomic structure. So atoms are the building blocks of the universe, bodily systems, pretty much all the matter that we deal with on a daily basis. And atoms are made up of three subatomic particles. These are the proton, neutrons, and electrons. Proton is positively charged. Neutrons are neutral, as their name suggests. And electrons are negatively charged. Protons, if we look at the roles that each play or where they live, define the element, and provide mass. Reside in the nucleus, which is a very small region in the center of the atom. Neutrons, on the other hand, they're neutral or uncharged, as their name suggests. They also provide mass to the atom. They stabilize the nucleus. Now, like charges, like protons, that are close together repel each other much like the north poles of two magnets. So if you put the north poles of two magnets close to each other, you will feel those magnets repel each other and not want to get close to each other. Positive charges behave exactly the same way. It's the same uh, fundamental force of nature. When you pack a bunch of positive charges like these protons together in a small space, uh, like a nucleus, they will repel each other. So the neutrons bring the um, fundamental strong nuclear force into play and stabilize that nucleus so that the protons don't um, repel each other and the nucleus doesn't break down. Now, some proton-neutron ratios are more stable than others, and we will talk about that more in the nuclear chemistry review video. Just want you to know that the neutrons stabilize the nucleus. And of course, in order to stabilize the nucleus, they have to reside in the nucleus. And the last particle, um, that is part of the atom is the electron. The electron does not reside in the nucleus. It resides in the electron cloud, which surrounds the nucleus. It is negatively charged. And the number of electrons determine the reactivity or the chemistry of the atom. We've discussed how atoms have protons, which are positive, and electrons, which are negative. And when we have equal numbers of protons and electrons, we have a neutral atom. Then electrons, for instance, if I have a lithium atom, lithium has three protons. A neutral lithium atom will have three electrons. However, you can change the number of electrons in a lithium atom. If I remove an electron, then I end up 
with a positive charge. So just like when you add plus one and minus one together, you get zero. When you have a positive and negative charge in an atom, they will get together and cancel each other out. And so it's when you have a charge that doesn't have, you don't have a set, so this positive proton does not have an electron to balance it out, then what will happen is you will get an ion. So an ion is an atom with a different number of electrons than protons. Now, in the case of the lithium, because we're actually missing an electron, uh, we actually have a positive charge, not a negative charge. And that is a cation. And it's counterintuitive because you're subtracting an electron to get a positive charge. Likewise, if we had, say, something like neutral fluorine has nine protons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it also has nine electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now these charges will cancel each other out so that we end up with an overall charge of zero because plus nine and minus nine add up to zero. However, fluorine will commonly make a negative one charge in which case it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine protons, but it has 10 electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So basically, what this means is that we have all of these positive charges in this case are canceled out by electrons, but then we have one electron left over that's not canceled out, which gives us our negative one charge. Negatively charged ions are called anions. It's important to note here that I never changed, even in the fluorine case or in the lithium case, the number of protons that the atom contained. The number of protons defines the element and never ever can the number of protons in an atom change. They are stuck in the nucleus and are not available for any change by any chemistry. Um, except nuclear chemistry, which we'll talk about more in the nuclear chemistry review. So in order to make ions, you can only add or subtract electrons. You cannot do anything else. And when you form a negative charge, that's because you added electrons. When you form a positive charge, that's because you lost an electron. So it's counterintuitive and backwards, and that's very important to remember. If we look at a very simplistic model of the atom, or the Bohr model, it puts the nucleus with the protons and the neutrons in the center of the atom, and then the electrons are in what we call the electron cloud in different energy levels and each energy level is farther away from the nucleus so 
The closer it is to the nucleus, the lower the energy of the electrons in that orbital. And the farther away, the higher the energy of the electrons. And so these fit together kind of like Russian dolls, where the nucleus would be the very smallest Russian doll, and the next doll outward would be the first energy level. The second doll would represent the second energy level and so on. The nucleus is significantly smaller than the electron cloud. So most of the atom is the electron cloud and the nucleus represents just a very tiny fraction of the entire volume of the atom. So if we were to say that the entire atom was the size of a football stadium, then the nucleus would be the equivalent of the size of a blueberry. So it's very, very dense, has all of the mass of the atom in the nucleus, and then because electrons weigh so much less than protons and neutrons, we can almost discount their mass uh, because the majority of the mass comes from the nucleus of the atom. But the majority of the space of the atom is taken up by electrons. Now, electrons don't orbit the nucleus of an atom like planets orbiting the sun. They exist in clouds and we can kind of envision this as sort of the nucleus is a beehive and there's a cloud of bees that are buzzing outside of that beehive uh, that represents the electron cloud.